AR Rahman needs no introduction. What does need an introduction is this particular piece. We went extremely deep. Conversations about spiritualism, about creativity, about the future of the music industry and so much more. It wasn't easy preparing for this podcast. It wasn't easy settling down for this podcast. It was extremely easy once the conversations began. I felt like we were in sync and I promise you, you won't believe the kind of stuff that Mr. A.R. Rahman has opened up about on the Ranveer show. I'm deeply grateful that I got to do this with one of my idols, the master of creativity, the maestro himself, A.R. Rahman on the Ranveer show. A.R. Rahman, sir, it's an honor having you on the show. Uh, I have so many things to speak to you about. I want to just begin this particular podcast with one phrase I read that really st stuck with me. The phrase, the quote is, every man has two very important days in his life. The two most important days in your life are the day you're born and the day you realize why you're born. So I'd like to begin by asking you that, sir. What was the day you realized the reason for your birth? Um, I think uh, doing Roja is when I realized. I think the whole how it happened, like Destiny, one of the the most favorite directors of mine, the most renowned uh, director and amazing human being, Mani Ratnam, K. Balachandar, one of the most respected producers, and all of them came together to sign me up and. And then how that soundtrack won, you know, like national award and the love of the people and how it transcended. Um, before that, I had a mentality of, oh, I, I don't want to do movies. I don't want to do movies because movies was something I was doing 10 years and almost jam-packed every day, two sessions, two sessions, almost like 40 years of experience in 10 years. So I was tired. God. <laughs> and so I said, I could do this one last movie and go out. But then how it transformed, like how there was a greater responsibility Greater love, greater giving back, all that stuff. <laughs> so when you were growing up, did you think you'd go down this same path? And I'm not saying movies. I'm saying this path of creation, this path of, uh, you know, the whole spiritual side to what you do. Did you think you'd go down this particular path while you were a teenager, maybe, you know, in your early 20s? I went through... No, I've said this many, many times, like I went through this uh, roller coaster ride in life where uh, it's a very unusual life um, where uh, my father's passed away. I grew up uh, taking, you know, lunch and breakfast for my father along with somebody, you know, like he used to tag on as a kid. Then he died and then mother took over. Then that whole life of how she struggled, how she was single handedly the most courageous woman I've ever seen. And uh, <clears throat> so we consciously took this path uh, where she felt very strong about uh, the spiritual Sufi path. And, and I said that whatever we decide, we decide together. And then we decided. And um, yeah, after that rest is history. <laughs> like, uh, there's a sense of... Uh, um, accomplishment within us thinking that we were strong enough and we were convinced about the decisions we took whether we moved in the other house or building the studio where I'm sitting here or um, standing by what like like what my mom did you know what we did together as a family and also being fearless about things which we believe in you yeah. Beautiful. Uh, I wanted to bring on Sufism a little later on the episode. I'm so glad you brought it on early, sir. Uh, I know it's something you consciously think about. We hear it in your music as well with Kun Faya Kun or Khwaja Mere Khwaja. There's, there's elements of it. But on a personal level, as a man, what has it changed in you, especially when you were growing up, seeing your mum? Uh, were there some learnings from that path that you've applied to your own mind and then you saw changes? I personally was an introvert and so this, the mind is the result of, I mean, the mind does all these things to you, your feeling. And then that if the mind gets refreshed, the mind gets, take, takes a larger purpose in life, 
then you see many thing manifesting you know your 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 actions manifest beautiful things and if you the most strongest man if you have a small mind why so you know the opposite happens so i'm here uh, a very small person timid low self esteem inferiority complex and the mind became empowered the mind was seeing bigger things um under that shadow of of that spirituality everything reflected in my life the decisions i took and the confidence with every step it was about praying and wishing that it'll go well for either for me or for other people and it was everything everything was a risky step nothing was a safe in it <laughs> safe step in it so no. um whether doing the music or doing when people recorded in bigger studios me having the smaller studio and feeling that oh I, we can do this this will do well and or um, using new singers or um or even finishing you know after 10 years of uh, working here going to throwing all the stuff prime time you know music direction stuff and going to Andrew Lloyd Webber in the UK and thinking that this is what my mind wants and this is what I need to evolve into I'm going doing Bombay Dreams as a musical stage not just for myself as a statement for Indians abroad so that we have an Indian show the help of Shekhar Kapoor and Andrew Lloyd Webber of course that time yeah lovely um do you feel you're still evolving at this stage so like uh, you know with because the evolution of it began in your teens in your early 20s after you've seen wins in life you've seen victories you've seen so much already done what's the evolution that's going on right now within your mind you can never stand still because the world is evolving the world is being born every second the like you were not there before now you're there right i'm speaking to you that means uh like we're both interacting and this is the new world and i'm getting used to it i'm learning from you <laughs> so no not no in a, in a way i'm just saying like uh, interacting with you your uh, the enthusiasm in your eyes is speaking to me is telling me to cheer up and answer those questions so it's not just uh, you asking me questions it's there's a relationship beyond that happening right and you are catering to your uh, people whom they they follow you and so this is with music too like when you go to a concert we we start singing if uh, when we rehearse it's all dead like we are rehearsing nobody cares you know that one person who's doing the stage is like ah he goes off and then the crowd comes <laughs> in you know with thirst they come into it like bees like give it to me i want to take it all i want to <laughs> drink the you know the nectar of love <laughs> and then everything changes like we even if you're tired it it just goes away and you feel like your body can do it and you you want to perform another half an hour more you want to do a loop where you just take one song for 15 minutes take them sing back call response so this is life i feel like and it's not just one sided it's always two sided and the more adversity the more i think we should shine the more we should um, rise up in positively and that's the beauty of the today's world i feel 100% so and that's the beauty of creative professions right like we are the only professions in the world which get to experience two extremely out of the body highs one is when you're performing like i'm a motivational speaker so that energy that enters you on stage it would enter me in my world when i'm giving motivational talks to many people uh, and the second high is when you're actually in your deep creative process where you're first listening to kun fire kun in your head before actually creating it you know it plays in your head before it plays in the real world and that process of getting from point a to point b and creating something out of your own mind that's the real joy of creativity but i specifically want to ask you your opinion on creativity so there's something i truly believe in that i have never created anything myself it's always given to me mm-hmm. and i somewhere feel that a part of you believes in something similar so what is your take on your own creations because when people say oh you know ar rahman the man he's created all this <laughs> do you, and i feel like that's also what's kept you humble i think in your head there's a voice that says no no it's not just me that's created <laughs> it maybe it's my technical capability but it's given to me also so i'd love to hear what do you think i think uh, this this famous uh, chinese uh, story you've heard that like uh, three students went to a chinese master and then and they were all sitting and their cups were actually already full 
So he was pouring all the empty cups. And then when it came to their cups, it was already full and he was pouring. It was overflowing. So they were asking, Master, it's already full. Yeah, it's full. Get out. <laughs> he said, you have to be empty to learn. You have to be empty to receive. You're, that emptiness is just uh, not just literally emptiness. It's about being ready to receive, being ready to um, empathize, being ready to change. And so, yeah, I think there's, it's a loaded word, I think, emptiness. <laughs> You're, you're talking about keeping the learner active inside of you, which I believe it definitely is for you, sir. Yeah, also, so, also I think um, the most beautiful things come to you when you, I don't know, how do I put it? They say a lack of ego, lack of personal ego. It's not there because the ego is the one which pro, uh, probably puts screens on seeing the, the right things. and But the ego is the one uh, ambition is also part of ego, but that is actually self-destructive in a way because you have to work hard. It makes you sleep less, but you can achieve things, greater things. So it's important to separate, uh, you know, and, uh, and to glorify the the gift which is given to you, and to be humble also, like <laughs> because you don't know when you're going to fall, and when you fall, and you your ego is taking you fall. And then you can't look at yourself again. You will be wrecked. Yeah. Um, have you ever had a phase like that? After your career took off where you had to wrestle with your own ego or pull yourself down or your family had to pull you down or something? No, I think when we're in the process of uh, refining constantly every day, every day there's an exercise to surrender, you know, like to not exist at all. And I think that kind of keeps you in the exercise of being free, being able to receive and surround yourself with good people. Surround yourself with people who, who teach you where you are, like who can, you know, or if, if you can see yourself clearly, that's good. But sometimes you, it, there's a screen between you and your real self. Yeah. Um, what would this version of you go tell? The 20 year old AR Rahman and the 30 year old AR Rahman. I know sometimes I feel like life is a burden. <laughs> I always felt life is a burden. Uh, I have to do this well. And, uh, you know, I think it's also because lack of holidays sometimes, you know, you need to just go away from things and your mind is fresh when you come back. But when you're overworked, you feel like uh, the sense of tiredness coming to you, the sense of, but a new idea, a new song, a new work of art, when you see, you know, uh, probably energizes you immediately. You feel like, oh my God, look at that kid singing. And uh, then you feel like that kid makes you feel like small. Why am do you practice? Why can't you sing like that? Why can't you play like that? And uh, that's why I love all this younger generation now, which is, there's a, then villages, they're in, um, in you know, towns, they're abroad. And not only just musicians, you know, like illustrators and everybody has a gift. It's not, this gift of creativity is not just, uh, there's no elitism in it. The best ideas mm. come from the most simple people and they have a sense, oh, I don't, I, I don't like this song. I don't like this movie. I like this movie. And you see that they're right, actually. Because <laughs> a real piece of art is just has to touch your soul and there's no screens to that. Mm. Yeah. 100%. Um, but do you, I mean, I understand you're on the flow, sir, with your creativity, always thinking about the next project, your learning is there any point where you've looked back at your life and says, hmm, maybe I could have done that different? Just from the perspective of giving lessons for this youth, that is entering the same path you entered when you were 18. No, actually, um, when I look back, I've dodged many bullets. <laughs> um, what do you mean? Sir? Dodged many bullets in the sense like, many things could have gone wrong. If I've just done... Um, and I think because of the guidance of my family, my mom, and, um, you know, guidance of good friends, you know, um, um, things have gone probably in the right way. I mean, nobody can go 100% right. We all fall down, get up, learn our lessons, come back, and we do that. And we need to acknowledge that, right? And in my case, I was always drenched in music um, or you know, songwriting or background score or Always feeling this this need to learn more. Feel like ah, I've not learned enough. I don't know how to do that. I can't do this fast. 
<laughs> and that you know that uh, void actually makes you there's a everlasting thirst for uh, not perfection I would say to extend what you have so that I can right. sometimes you know I do a song for like a month and feel like it's not good then maybe it's a different style and oh, the lucky thing about India is like they let you do anything and get away with it <laughs> You know, you can do a jazz thing, you can do a folk thing, you can do a Carnatic thing, you can do a raga based thing, you can do a symphonic thing. And they're op- with open arms. You know, if it sounds good to them, the ears, it's fine. We're not being like super critical. Oh, you change the Nishadam to, you know, you shouldn't have put that card there. That's blasphemy. You know, nobody's going to tell you. And that sense of freedom is there. I feel that that sense of, um, what do you call, naivety here is the best thing and artists should, take advantage of that and create amazing things so because you've composed music for different kinds of indians the questions about india what do you think ties our culture together because i know that composing good music is a lot about mm-hmm. compassion understanding how someone else would perceive it yeah. so i'm and i'm sure every time you put out a song you've understood something about human kind especially in our country so what ties all indians together because we're multicultural but what's that common link so we all like melody we all like um, something rooted in our culture but then we all like something new you know we don't we want to want i don't give me my culture back you give me something new that's that's why you are there as i can do that you know like um, if you're a singer or if you're a composer especially people are expecting um, um something to be potent something a lyric coming alive and alive in the sense it should touch your there should be a tear in your eyes when you listen to it and so sometimes you know it's a simple thing sometimes that um even the the art of arranging and in recording sometimes you feel like you overdo certain things and you lose that quality for instance we did a song um six months back and uh, shaker kapoor listened to it and he said uh, can we remove all the rhythm and just make it a cappella and then did that and then it worked much better than all the rhythms have so we tend to learn things from great people even now and i was thinking how did shaker kapoor know that with all the rhythm it will work better <laughs> you know and uh, so then people responded to much better so there's something she knows that i'm still yet to learn mm. right um and about the west so what is that world like because you've worked there so what was your learning from that world like how do they think different what are the good aspects of it what are the bad aspects of it the good aspects is like they really go deep into you know every detail of it and um, there are two different kind of um, west thing one is driven by a director like Danny Boyle who says nobody comes to me and my composer it's just my our two relationships it's like a friend you know like how i work with mani ratnam ji and um, the other one is having 12 executives telling you what to do they all come with the suitcases and like oh we did the screening and uh, this tenth music has got 94 if you change anything if you lose that it'll be a disaster for the movie i think music should be driven by passion driven by um an ambition to to express you know originally not uh, having a kitchen of many ideas together and yeah <laughs> do you do you think far ahead for yourself like what am i going to do 5 years from now 10 years from now do you think like that mm, sometimes is actually um 96 i think i had this urge to do like spiritual medicine farming and what, what do you like what, like ayurveda no like, it's like that? more prophetic medicines you know it's um, there were, there's like books of um, healing and then i found a teacher and and then i became busy then i went back and he passed away in 2004 so the land was just lying there and then i said the best medicine is cinema <laughs> Let's build a cinema uh, mm. shooting floor. And when I did this movie, we built this big floor. You can watch it on the net. Uh, it's a thirty-six thousand square feet, so you can do all this new Unreal Engine um, filming, virtual, you know, set filming, and all this stuff. There, you know? Got it. So why go into movies in this way at this stage of your life? What's gone on in the background? Like, what have you been thinking? And do you think this will continue with 99 songs as the beginning? Well, what I was saying was um, the the whole 
uh, power kept changing. Like the power has gone from the director to big corporates, which is very good. And those corporates, whether it's a, is, a, is it a music company or anything, they have now control over creativity also. They have like, I can get five composers for a um, movie, which is a good thing, which a lot of people do that stuff. And I can get uh, remixes. I can do this. I can do that. Then you realize, okay, it's all about power. <laughs> and if I'm a composer, I'm the hierarchy of the fifth or sixth or something like that. And I don't have a say later, whereas things get hijacked. So there should be everything. There should be that. There should be pure director working with the composer. And there should be an expression of the composer by, by myself. So I said, the third one I can only do if I write my own script, I produce my movie, I engage myself to do the music fully. If I'm not given a chance to do music fully, where are you going to get that? Um, the prime time of your life is limited. It depends on health. It's upon a mental health and physical health and many other stuff, life and family. And so I don't want to waste my prime time arguing about all this stuff in a way. And one of the biggest reasons is like, so that empowerment was necessary that I produce my movie. I write my script. I get a director. So it's my vision to do greater things in music. Now, if I go to a company which is making movies like content, the, the word movies became content. And um, that word content makes things more uh, like a business rather than art of, of something com coming out of love and stuff. There's a, there's a period of that thing. You're getting paid this much. You have to sign off the rights. So it's like one butcher shop, like chak, chak, chak. <laughs> hmm. Then I... First 15 years of my life, I never signed any contracts. I, I rarely signed two or three. It was all out of trust, out of love and out of respect. And um, it was like that. And then this is a great thing because our industry has to grow. But then everything should coexist. I feel like this should coexist with that. And if I had not done this, it's a failure on my part. After being empowered, not taking the power to do something to make a change. Right? This is really inspirational, sir, because at this stage, you're challenging yourself. And from everything you've said, even when you spoke about your teenage, I, I see this constant learner mentality along with a warrior mentality. Yes. You know, you're going out there and like taking action. You're, you'll be taking on people if you actually go deeper down this path, but you're pretty fearless about it. So that's the inspiration I'm taking on a personal level from this, sir. But uh, speaking about taking inspiration from you, uh, I've had probably two extremely dark phases in my life. And in both those phases, my first instinct was go home, go to your room, sit alone and listen to Kun Faya Kun. Wow. I don't know. There's something about that particular song, sir. So maybe you're wrapping up these same emotions in music. Uh, we we have like a Twitter section later on in this podcast where we'll take fan questions. But many of those questions about Kun Faya Kun. Mm. I'd love for you to speak about that song, mm. sir. Ki what was going on in your head? Because it's helped so many people all over the world. There's something even more elevated in that song compared to just the rest of the music in the world. So I'd love to know that story, sir. It's a very deep story. Like if you take all the truths in the world, um, as a Sufi, I believe that it all comes from the same source. The Every message uh, is from the same source and it's two different tribes and different. Um, they form different religions, different faiths, different um, way of life. Whether it's Africa, whether it's America, whether it's India, whether it's, you know, far. And uh, so the politics of um, religion comes in. Hardcore people come in. In every religion. No religion is, you know, saved from that. But if you look at the core, we go deep in, there is a union there. Like Rumi says, there's a place beyond, uh, beyond good things and bad things. I'll see you there. And what is that place he's talking? Because he's talking very metaphorically. Is that place where your heart and consciousness meet? So, you know, the Kunfaikon comes from the holy book and it says uh, how God created the world. So when uh, Imtiaz Ali and, uh, you know, he said that, um, can we use this as a Kavali? I said, my God, shaken us. Like, what are you trying to do? You know, destroy me over it. <laughs> because it's the most sacred word from the holy book. And uh, I don't want to do anything which should, you know, what do you call, corrupt or blasphemy, you know, 
pure faith, not about hardcore people trying to do stuff. For a true believer, he said, no, no, I won't do that. I'm careful. I'll be careful. I promise. That's okay. I'll do it. <laughs> so we all know like uh, many faiths are all interconnected with commonalities. You know, commonality is about empathy. Commonality is about uh, glorifying the creator who's uh, created all the stuff. In us. We call them different names, different ideologies, different uh, shapes and shapeless. And But we all believe that above all that, there is a light. We all believe that that light is with every one of us, whether we believe or not. And we are connected. And uh, so I think that's one of the reasons why I kept telling my assistants the same thing, like, oh my God, everybody talks about this. Uh, somebody from the West who don't understand a word of it is responding to it. And from India, every faith, like whether the Muslims, Christians, or anybody is responding to that, Hindus. And this is beyond politics. This is the true core of spirituality transferring from an audio. From So it doesn't need the... Uh, it doesn't need explanations. It doesn't need the... Uh, what do you call, um, I don't know, meanings or anything. It, it passes from the truth to truth. The truth in you is realizing another truth. And beyond uh, all the fabrications, beyond all the, um, what do you call? Um, layers? I don't know. Yeah, beyond all the layers. So, so uh, these are the fascinating things about life. Like, uh, for instance, um, this is one story like Ihan but from 99 songs we felt like we should introduce a guy with a different set of tool set like he should be able to play the piano he should be singing and uh, like how Disney trains their artists and then they become big you know pop stars and so what if India has that and we present Ihan to my K music conservatory they train him on the piano he sent him one month to Hollywood to learn about uh, understated acting and all this stuff he came back and uh, the movie finished. We waited last whole year for theatrical release. Patiently, he was in the low. And uh, we gave him a piano. Two weeks back, he comes and sings in tune. He sings Teri Nazar in tune. I feel like, oh my God, he's like a singer. He is almost 50% a singer. He just needs a little more coaching. Hmm. Now he can be playing a piano and a singing hero who is uh, educated in music. And so we, <laughs> we felt so proud that we invested that time with him. And how seeds of intention becomes when it becomes a plant and when it becomes a tree and a banyan tree later, you know, multiplying that to the whole world. So that's one thing which is fantastic to see. Whether it's Ihan or whether it's um, our school from Sunshine Orchestra or other students who are doing beautifully well. Um, so one thing I'm hearing from you at this stage is the kind of emotion you wrapped into Kun Faya Kun or all your music. There is this sense of inspiration, motivation, healing. Maybe you're doing it partly for a past version of you. Maybe you're doing it for your audiences. Maybe it's a bit of everything. Um, do you think about like the future of the Indian music industry in general? And I'm not just talking about the world of films. Independent artists. Um, you know, like there was this whole pop wave in the 90s that had happened. Uh, do you see something like that happening again because of YouTube, because of the world of content, because of Instagram Reels, TikTok? Will we see a rise of a lot of independent artists? And also, what do you want? You know, what do you want from the future of the Indian music industry? Yeah, I won the Grammys. I said that this Grammy is for all the people who are going to shine in 10 years, evolving into amazing songwriters and storytellers, not trying to be somebody else but themselves and coming in a very glory uh, in a very complimenting, glorified way to, to stun us, you know. And uh, we started an app called Maja. I'm a part of it. And we released a song called Enjami by, you know, uh, Arivu and V and Santosh Narayan. And then it hit like 120 million already. And so that I feel like um, every state has the potential, potential of becoming, you know, doing things dominating the world. Because every culture in India, it's like different. 24 different states, 24 different countries together, holding on together to the idea of India. And com being completely different, being completely, having its own culture, food, dress code, and, um, you know, but still holding on together is a miracle. And so 
this is high time to empower these artists to tell the stories to tell their past and uh, also go into the future like expressing themselves to go into their culture 2.0 mm yeah uh, i mean we're seeing the pratik kuhars jasleen yeah. royals of the world killing it and i'm hoping that we see a hundred more of those if a kid wants to become the next ar rahman what would you tell that kid <laughs> be passionate so keep learning be passionate try to be the best um don't uh, take failure as an option <laughs> like mm. um there's no option this is grayed out <laughs> 100% um i saw the chat you had with my brother yashraj mukhate uh, you spoke about meditation you briefly mentioned it so i i personally want to dive deep into that question so i am a meditator as well and because i'm a creative professional i've seen the power it's given me for the creative side of things you know you get your ideas you get your perspectives you get your sense of calm so for you sir what is the meditation you practice and what has it given you over the years the meditation i practice is actually um um the ultimate meditation meditation is to see yourself mingling with the the sublime and um the process of refining more and more like they say there's 70000 screens between you and god and each screen is removed by your actions you know your action of becoming humble your action of killing your ego your action of uh, not eating too much your action of refraining from illegal activities your action of fighting your lust your action of uh, not being greedy your action of being empathetic your action of uh, being good to your family being you know paying your respects to your mother paying respects to your teacher paying respects to anybody who's doing good and not harming them and each screen goes off and then you finally mingle with your divine and um, so these are the formulas which every book talks about every uh, mess messenger talks about this every book talks about and um, so it's pretty clear and then it's important that every every person gets access to this knowledge so that they can also experience the full human potential and excel themselves but do you sit in any form of meditation so like do you take 20 minutes out where you close your eyes do you do some kind of chanting i meditate in the breathing. lift sometimes when i'm going to lift i'm meditating let me master sit sir okay come let's go <laughs> <laughs> okay i hear you um got to ask you about a day in the life of ar rahman what happens because uh, there are rumors that you only work at night there are rumors about you know again the stuff you mentioned about those 70000 screens i'm sure you've fixed your lifestyle in certain ways you know you must have shed off certain things certain ideas certain thoughts so i'd love for you to highlight what a day in your life is right now along with a few changes you've made recently or in the last 10 years my life i think at first i get people who are friends and not superstars and divas and people who understand me people understand my way of life how i work how i come late <laughs> so it is like a frozen zone you come here you don't think you're waiting or you you don't think you you do your own thing and then sometimes i'm doing something i'll come and meet people they'll be do, doing the browsing or they'll I'll editing or something i'll meet them and go back so it's not like an appointment oh i have to meet this editor i have to meet this um person who was uh, doing something and so there's a sense of zoned out is zoned out and um sometimes you work for like 5 hours sometimes you don't work at all <laughs> and <laughs> yeah because it's it'll be so too monotonous to listen to music constantly also when you when you are in mm-hmm. silence and you listen to it you understand the value of it then constantly desensitizing yourself with bombarding your with all this stuff I was going to ask you sir does music play in your head all the time uh, because that's what a lot of people would assume but I'd actually rephrase that question as what else do you do outside of music sir like is there any kind of place of interest where you get inspiration from what do you do to recharge I go I go for drive sometimes um sometimes I go for like kilometers to a sufi shrine or something or um or take a flight get out of india <laughs> <laughs> no i can't do that but um, for me i had to go every two months to uh, la because um just to refresh and come back just to be in up to date with things happening 
but now past one year i've been here like we all been in india and uh, more time with family more time um discussing talking and also my mom was ill like the whole last year she was ill and she passed away in december so um so that whole parallelly for the past 8 years we've been going through sitting in uh, ventilator rooms you know icus my sisters and me both of us experienced this uh, seeing her like you know fading away and and also the life has to go on come back to the studio come back develop the story go do le mask go back to the icu and bringing her back to the home and so this is not just like a uh, easy run it was tough but we all have to understand the cycle of life and everybody has to go through that stuff recently what have you learned about suffering and death like what's your opinion on it ah sometimes you know death is relief and um yeah we have to take it in a very philosophical way we have to take it in a way where we have to just be grateful for the health we have and we have to be grateful for the health we have to be grateful for the gifts we've got and be grateful to for all the friends we have all the you know the people who have helped us all the people who have smiled at us you know i am grateful for everything i want to pray for them so. yeah um the meaning of life for a lot of young hustlers you know people want to make it big is they want to create legacies and leave you know beyond money beyond fame they want to leave something for this world so so do you ever think of your own death and what you wish to leave behind or how you wish to be remembered by the world i don't because that's very narcissistic like um uh, yeah because that itself is too boring like you have to sweat for your name after you gone like who's going to see that you're not going to see that so um i felt like be that um be kind when you're alive be resourceful when you're alive and do things which benefits human humanity not for your name but because it's a good thing to do. like in a simplistic way a well and a tree plant a tree and a good word or a or a smile at least no <laughs> oh, that's beautiful um just any advice for the young musicians of this country sir um you know who i'd even actually go as far as saying people who don't pursue a career in music because of the fear of it when i say musicians i mean everyone who's currently in bank jobs doctors whatever who hasn't taken that plunge i think just just watch them? this movie the movie is about them <laughs> 99 songs okay. is about um like luckily my mom uh, said you you need to do music you don't you don't need to do studies your father did that it's exactly opposite to any other family like any other family if uh, somebody says i want to do music they'll say ah, no boy beta you just finish your doctor you finish your engineer finish your graduation then you do music it's fine they all over concerned and over protective about the children that sometimes they jeopardize what's good is going to happen to them of them being a creative person by not encouraging them and uh, making them suffer so much so mm-hmm. yeah i think the new world requires these people the new world requires these entertainers these creative people who are changing already you know they are coming from nowhere and and doing amazing things and making us smile lovely uh i really wish to see what you create on this journey so this visual journey that you're going on but i think it's time to turn to twitter and get the audience questions uh so we will do that in this coming segment okay Okay um so these are the twitterverse questions neeraj fatnani asks uh, sir's r- views on remakes and a lack of creativity within the modern music industry uh, do you have any viewpoint on this do you feel like there's a lack of creativity the sense of investment of time and trust is not there i feel like um uh, unlike the directors in the you know from the 50s 60s 70s 80s who trusted the composers and extracted beautiful things from poetry to tune to execution and to executing the song on screen has become like okay let me do this song it will become a hit i'll pump in money get some millions of views and we'll pull in people and it's become like a formula four weeks of marketing and let's do this and 
so everything should not be like uh, you know it's not a blanket uh, doing things on things like it's not binary and you know mm. art is something which is very personal is very subjective and each one has its own tricks on own uh, in process and we should recognize that and we should trust and we should encourage that and that will bring beauty back to the compositions of you lovely uh, chandra kiran asks what's the one song that you turn to the most out of all the songs in the world for me it's honestly kun fire kun i'm not just saying that to you it's given me too much healing for me not to turn to that i don't lead to any song because then i can't create anything i'll be going back to that i have to forget all the songs to make something new yeah hmm okay uh, adarsh mishra asks how did you manage to create your own identity within this saturated music industry when i think it's from your early career i think the likes and don'ts what we we start believing and when we have this quality of uh, searching for something new it automatically you know we, we listen to thousand different things and that thousand different things become an entity by itself becoming you you know and uh, mm-hmm. that becomes your personality i like funk i don't like, like jazz i like reggae i like film music then film music has all this stuff and then that becomes new Mm. um so lots of questions about uh, the indian cultural music scene the folk music scene yeah. the classic music scene adarsh mishra asks what's the future of all these you know which are non commercial the future is to <clears throat> have great art centers across all the states and uh, create a whole ensemble of things where it becomes a statement not just single 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 talent but join them to make huge entities like you know if you look at Cirque du Soleil or if you look at uh, Broadway if you look at West End they bring in multiple extraordinary talent multiple different departments to make a statement there's a lion king there's this thing mm. and uh, if you go to africa there is there's if you go to even bali you they have the culture and then people come to watch that stuff but here we don't do that it's it happens in the villages sometimes but the cities should encourage and we should probably celebrate each culture we should have mm um a question from sanjit keshwani uh, how do you deal with negative opinions about the work you do um i mean if there's with the no negative opinions it's boring there's always the conflict is all uh-huh. conflict is always good but you need to have your own opinion first of all and if that opinion is uh, pushing you to be better take that and then improve yourself so the one who takes criticism actually becomes better Hmm okay Satyam Pande asks uh, do you take any pressure about being AR Rahman at this stage you have to live up to your past no no how do you do you ever think of that so like no, I just, what's behind you I feel like I just pray and I feel like whatever is good for me uh, I leave it to god I leave I pray a lot and so that way your your burden actually is taken by somebody else you become just an instrument Yeah, that's the meaning of spiritual growth so taking all your burdens giving it to that energy that universe that god and saying it's not my burden you take me through yeah, it exactly. uh which which brings me to the final question i have for you on a personal level always wanted to ask you this so what is um your view on god everyone has their own image of it you know what is your how would you how would you tell your children about it if you were telling them the first time about god what would you tell them there's a beautiful story of rumi he says that Do you know why the the bamboo the flute cries because it's been cut off from its source and uh, so we all of us are you know that whole thirst of meeting the source is always within us and so we temporarily meet that source when you're praying we temporarily uh, meet that source when you're glorifying it we temporarily meet that when we recognizing it whenever you uttering the names uttering the qualities of god so that way we are connected and we also getting the support of that and so this connection and remembrance is all uh, life about for me the glorification of uh, somebody eternal and uh, we are a piece of you know that blessing all suffering and fears moving one step away from that thing called god uh, and all forms of prayer devotion are one uh, way of moving one step closer to it ar rahman sir honor speaking with you uh, honor listening to your music growing up honor listening to kun fire kun repeatedly thank you for the healing you've put out in the world sir and of course as a you know admirer of you admirer of your music thank you for being on my piece of content this is a huge day for me thank you god bless thank you sir
थैंक यू सो मच